We've all got questions. Why am I here? What's the point? What difference does my life make? Thank you. <laughs> Why do things that are so bad for us taste so good? Hey, hey Siri, Siri, do you, do you pray? pray? I don't have an answer for that. How can I live life to the full? What can I really trust? What's my purpose? What do you think happens when you die? You're going straight to the gulags. Does anyone hear my prayer? What's for dinner? What will make me happy? Why don't good things last forever? What is God really like? Does anyone else even ask themselves these questions? Hey everyone, I've got an amazing Alpha Online group here. A better place to ask life's big questions. Ask Alpha. Good morning and welcome to our service here at Malmesbury Abbey for the 17th of January. A terrific welcome to you uh, if you've been with us before or if this is your first time. Do get in contact with us um, on vicar at malmesburyabbey.com or follow the website on www.malmesburyabbey.com. Well, what have we got going on this Sunday? Well, we're continuing our series in Exodus and Catherine's going to be sharing with us about experiencing God's deliverance. James Coles is going to be sharing what he will be doing at this time tomorrow, how we live our Christian life in the midst of the hurly-burly of uh, lockdown three. And then we've got Molly Race, who's going to be leading our prayers and many other um, things, readings, activities, songs. Do join us and have a great time. Let me pray and we'll launch in. Almighty God, we ask that you would please let your blessing rest upon us, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you would stir up in our hearts, that we may worship you in spirit and truth and know you, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great service. He's our rescuer. Captive, good news for the shame. There is good news for the world who walked away. There is good news for the doubter, the one religion failed. For the good Lord has come to seek and save. He's our
What a great song. Hello everybody, Dick Venn here. We're going to carry on in our service today by reading together Psalm 139. And that's uh, from the contemporary English version. And we're going to read verses 1 to 10. And would you join with me in the words in blue type, please? Psalm 139. You have looked deep into my heart, Lord, and you know all about me. You know when I am resting or when I am working, and from heaven you discover my thoughts. You notice everything I do and everywhere I go. Before I even speak a word, you know what I will say, and with your powerful arm you protect me from every side. I can't understand all this. Such not wonderful knowledge is far above me. Where could I go to escape from your spirit or from your sight? If I were to climb up to the highest heavens, you would be there. If I were to dig down to the world of the dead, you would also be there. Suppose I had wings like the dawning day and flew across the ocean. Even then, your powerful arm would guide and protect me. A lovely psalm reminding us of God's care and protection on us. In our new series on Exodus, we heard last, ne night, last week about Moses encountering God, maybe for the first time at the burning bush. Moses is asked to confront Pharaoh and to let my people go. Pharaoh's refusal brings about the ten plagues, and today we jump ahead to the tenth plague. If you'd like to catch up on the story as it unfolds, you could pause the video and read Exodus chapters 4 to 11, or you can watch the Lego story um, at www.youtube.com watch and then these numbers and we're going to put that on the website and we're going to put it on the comments of the video here so you can click on it to watch. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you for all your goodness to us and for your love for every person in the whole world. Thank you, Lord, that you made the scientists who have produced vaccines against COVID-19. May they now be rolled out fast. We ask for your healing for those who are ill with COVID. Please, Lord, strengthen doctors and nurses and others who care for them who are already exhausted. Help them to do their very best. And please, too, will you comfort those who can't visit their sick, sick loved ones. Help them to entrust them to you, and wherever possible, Lord, please will you give them your amazing peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. Let us pray now for others who are in need of hospital treatment, having to wait during this crisis. Let's bring them and any others we know to be ill at this time to the Lord in a moment of silence now. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayer. And we pray too for those who have lost out in other ways because of COVID-19. The businesses, self-employed, and others who are financially vulnerable. Students and children whose education is suffering. The lonely and any who might be in danger because of abuse, possibly whilst they're trapped at home. Lord, you love every one of these people far more than we do. Please, will you help them? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, that a record number of MPs attended Parliament yesterday, uh, on Wednesday for the World Watch List. May our government and governments all over the world work to protect those who are being persecuted for their faith. And please, will you strengthen 
and protect all those whose work is work is to tell others of your love over the radio or the internet or one to one on the ground. Lord, please protect them and spread your gospel throughout the world, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And finally, Lord, we pray for the United States. May those who know and love you listen now to your voice. May Joe Biden and the new government be guided by you into the future. May black and white Americans respect one another. May the rich care about the poor. And may Donald Trump retire peacefully and find good and peaceful ways to use his time in his retirement. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, my name is James. This time tomorrow, I shall be feeding the old girls here, uh, the Lord willing. Uh, we had a very poor spring last year, so we're really short of grub. Um, after feeding the cows, I'm going to be uh, getting the cows ready for their TB test. It's an extraordinary TB test. Unfortunately, we had uh, two reactors in the last month and also an inconclusive which means that we're going to have to have another test, or another three tests, in fact. And the first one, again, is tomorrow. It's always a bit sad, I find, because I work with some of these old girls for 15 years, and you sort of get to know them. I guess we all have sort of uh, go-to verses in the scripture. Uh, I can think of several, you know, his are the cattle on a thousand hills. But the one I was thinking of particularly at the moment is, uh, comes at the end of the uh, prophecy of Habakkuk and it goes something like this though the fig tree does not bud though the there are no grapes on the vines though the olive crop fails though the fields produce no food though there are no sheep in the pen or cattle in the stalls yet I will rejoice in the Lord I will be joyful in God my Saviour. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of deer. He enables me to walk on the heights. Remarkable verses. But what is even more remarkable is the context of those verses. Actually, uh, Habakkuk was not a farmer as far as we know. Um, but he was really talking about the whole economy. Though the whole economy fails, yet he will rejoice in the Lord. And the reason for that economy failing was that God was going to bring judgment on the nation that did not respond to the prophets, calling them to repent of their sins. A remarkable verse. So my prayer uh, is that uh, I would be able to rejoice, whatever the future holds, whatever the results are tomorrow. Uh, but for us, as his people, may we also be able to rejoice in the Lord, our Saviour. Thank you. One man, Moses, went to Pharaoh, the Egyptian ruler. Let my people go. We must hold a special festival. Let us go far into the desert. Our God will make terrible things happen if you do not let us go. At first, Pharaoh said no and made things even more difficult for our people. They're just lazy. No, they will not go. Make them work harder. You've just given them the chance they wanted. Now we're dead men. But then, all kinds of strange things began to happen to the Egyptians. 
nine different disasters occurred. But our people were not touched by any of them. And still, Pharaoh would not give in. Every one of you must borrow as much gold and silver from your Egyptian neighbors as you can. Tonight, a terrible sickness will sweep the cities. It will reach even the palace. Tell the people of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, the head of each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for his family to eat. Choose either a sheep or a goat, but it must be a one-year-old male that has nothing wrong with it, and it must be large enough for everyone to have some of the meat. Each family must take care of its animal until the evening of the 14th day of the month, when the animals are to be killed. Some of the blood must be put on the two doorposts and above the door of each house where the animals are to be eaten. That night the animals are to be roasted and eaten, together with bitter herbs and thin bread made without yeast. When you eat the meal, be dressed and ready to travel. Have your sandals on, carry your walking stick in your hand and eat quickly. This is the Passover festival in honour of me, your Lord. That same night, I will pass through Egypt and kill the firstborn son in every family and the firstborn male of all animals. I am the Lord and I will punish the gods of Egypt. The blood on the houses will show me where you live and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Then you won't be bothered by the terrible disasters I will bring on Egypt. Passover. Kill a lamb. Smear blood on the sides of your doors. Stay indoors all night. Eat the lamb. Get ready to move out. The sickness will pass through every Egyptian house. If you put the lamb's blood on your door, it will miss your family. The eldest son in every Egyptian household suddenly died, including Pharaoh's. If they stay here, we'll all be dead. Get out from among my people.
Well, hello, and it's good to be with you today. A few years back, when my husband Nigel was pastoring a small Baptist church in the Five Valleys near Stroud, he was part of an open the book team that went into the village primary school each week. And in one of the early sessions he did, the team were telling the story that formed part of today's reading about the night that God's people, the children of Israel, were protected from the last plague that God sent on Egypt, the one that finally persuaded Pharaoh to flip free them from slavery. And the blood of a lamb painted on the doorposts of their houses protected their firstborn children, whilst those of the Egyptians including Pharaoh's own son, died. And that rescue is commemorated in the Jewish feast of Passover. And part of what the Open the Book team was doing was reenacting that first Passover meal. So the team had prepared some fake blood from dilute tomato ketchup, which Nigel, playing the part of the father of the household, painted on the frame of the doorway to the assembly hall at the appropriate moment in the story. And uh, this illustration proved to have made a great impression on the children because as they all filed out and Nigel and the team stood at the door to say goodbye to them, every third or fourth child, it seemed, came up and said, hey, Mister, was that real blood? So just to recap, in our Bible reading today, God had sent Moses, an Israelite, to ask Pharaoh the ruler of the Egyptian Empire, to release the Israelite people from slavery in Egypt and let them go to a land that God would give them. And when Pharaoh refused, God sent a series of signs and wonders, really, but they would have appeared as plagues to the um, Egyptians, frogs, locusts, the Nile turning to blood, to convince Pharaoh to do what Moses had asked. And each time Pharaoh said he would let the Israelites go. And then when the, the plague stopped, he changed his mind and said they had to stay. But this last plague, the one that would finally convince Pharaoh, that would bring the death of the firstborn children in the land. And so God tells Moses to tell the people of Israel on the night before the plague comes that in each household they're to kill a lamb ready for supper. And God says this, this is in Exodus 12, then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. And on the same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. So for the Israelites that night, the blood on the doorposts was a sign of God's protection. It kept them and their children safe from death. And God goes on to say, this is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. A lasting ordinance and, and the word Passover comes from a Jewish word Peshar which means to pass over in the sense of meaning to spare or to let go and that's what was happening in Jerusalem in the last week of Jesus's life the night that Jesus ate the Passover supper with his disciples families and small groups all over the city would have been meeting to remember this deliverance from death in the precincts of the temple, a lamb would have been ritually sacrificed to recall the lambs who were killed on that Passover night so many years ago. The Bible has another word for this deliverance. It uses the word redemption. If you were a slave in ancient times, perhaps because you'd fallen into a debt and couldn't repay it, your relative or friend could redeem you by paying a sum of money to buy your freedom. The sacrifice of the lamb at Passover was part of that redemption price. If you've read my blog in the news sheet this week, you'll already know that one of the great things that we found about doing the online Bible course last term was being able to see how the different bits of the Bible fit together. 
And as a group, we were able to explore how the promises of God were worked out across generations, how prophecies pointed forward to the life and ministry of Jesus, and to see that there are consistent patterns in the way that God deals with his people down the centuries and with us today. And the idea of redemption is one of those continuing themes. Israel's redemption from slavery in Egypt is the model of um, an even bigger rescue, the rescue that Jesus accomplished on the cross from the slavery to the sin that cuts us off from God, which leads ultimately to death. So when the New Testament writers came to tell the story of Jesus's ministry, they often used the imagery of release from slavery to describe the experience of coming into a fresh relationship with God through Jesus. And uh, Anthony Billington, who's written the book that we're basing our Bible studies on, this book on Exodus, Freedom to Serve God, he says the pattern of redemption that begins in the book of Exodus is woven through the tapestry of the Bible as a whole. And so uh, the Apostle Peter writes in his first letter, for you know that it is not with perishable things such as silver and gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. That's in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. And the Apostle Paul says something similar. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed, he says. That's in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. And if you heard Pete's talk in our online service last week, you'll have heard him quote from Exodus 3, where God says, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians. And Pete said that was, that was the gospel right there. God hears and sees his people, he is concerned and he comes down to rescue. That's what God did for the people of Israel and it's what he did for us in Jesus. If you go back to the story of Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, you see a picture of how the relationship between us, mankind, humankind and God, how that gets fractured by disobedience and a determination to go our own way. And the outcome of that is guilt and shame and fear and broken relationships. Jesus came to counteract that, to bring us into a new relationship with God, a relationship in which we are free, not free just to do anything we please, but the freedom to be what God designed us to be, the freedom of loving and knowing ourselves to be loved, of experiencing joy and peace, of being set free from whatever used to enslave us, and above all the freedom to serve God and to serve others. This is what Jesus' death and resurrection accomplished for us. So, I want to give a different answer to those children in the primary school in the Five Valleys and a different answer to all of us. Because yes, it is real blood. The doorposts of the children of Israel in Egypt, painted with the blood of a lamb, were a sign of God's mercy and they offered protection against death. The wood of the cross, painted with the blood of the Lamb of God, offers to us a sign of God's mercy and the promise of everlasting life. For the children of Israel, their doorposts offered the gateway to freedom from slavery in Egypt and a new life in the promised land 
that would God would give them. For us, and for all Christian believers, the cross offers a gateway to freedom from sin and death and a new life with God in the kingdom of heaven. So I'm going to pray for us and then we'll sing our final song. It's by Graham Kendrick and it's a song of hope and trust in the God who has redeemed us. But first, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that as the Passover lamb, you sacrificed yourself for us. And because of that, we have been set free from the slavery of sin and death. Father God, might the redemption that you have brought about through Christ inspire us to live for him in our daily lives with ever deeper joy. And Holy Spirit, please lay on our hearts those friends and colleagues who haven't yet experienced the freedom that Christ brings. Help us to see how we can share our freedom story with them. Help us to see who we could invite to Alpha. Show us how we can reach out to them this week. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus, the Passover lamb who lives to redeem the world. Amen.
Well, that was simply splendid and wonderful to have you with us. Uh, and a huge thank you to all of those who are involved uh, on the screen, but also behind organising the broadcast so that we could be with you. Um, there are just a couple of things I want to say before the blessing. Uh, the first is this. If you would like to take that uh, journey through Exodus um, a bit deeper, there is a Bible study that's being run online by Catherine. Uh, if you'd like to be part of it, Catherine at MalmesburyAbbey.com is the email to contact her. Also, at, uh, on the 28th of January, we'll be starting Alpha Online. So if you'd like to come or a friend would like to come as well, uh, do get in contact with us and let us know so we can give you the details. Similarly, it's Catherine at MalmesburyAbbey.com. And we have Zoom afterwards. Uh, which is we can share fellowship with one another over the internet over a cup of coffee. If you would like to support the Abbey, that would be absolutely tremendous. Um, if you go to the website, you will find that there is a donation button there. So do do that if you can. Life is very expensive, I know, for all of us at that time, this time. But if you were able to support the work of God that we're doing, uh, that would be great. Take care and God be with you. And let's receive his blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. God be with you and God keep you at this time. You and yours. Goodbye.